Good morning, good morning. Great to see you this morning and uh, so good to be here. We have got Waverly with us this morning on live stream. Let's give Waverly a great hand. Have we got a photo of Waverly? I think we've got a photo of Waverly. Look at that. So how cool is that auditorium, hey? So I've been saying for months and months it's almost there. Well, it's closer to almost being there. So we have almost finished it and uh, great to have our Waverly campus um, in the auditorium. No, that, that, that was a, a screenshot then. They're not frozen. They're, they're alive. They're alive for Jesus. Praise God. So absolutely fantastic. God is doing some great things in our church at the moment. Isn't it great to be alive? Isn't it great to be part of a great church? Um, I just came back from Queensland. I've been doing some regional meetings up there. And, uh, you know, it's like 27 degrees up there. And they're all wearing jumpers. I was the only guy in a T-shirt. And uh, I just want to say this today. Queenslanders are soft. Us Melbourneites, we know how to handle the cold, don't we? Hey, amen. It's not going anywhere, is it? Okay. Uh, I want to thank you. We've raised, I think, $221,000 so far for a building offering. So give yourselves a great hand. It's, it's awesome. Uh, obviously, we want to reach the 395. I know there are some people that are, have, are committing to it over the next couple. So, again, if you uh, can give tax deductibility, if that helps you, then we can still do that. Is that right, Alex? We've still got some. Just nod yes. Doesn't matter what I say, just nod yes. And so uh, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, as you know, we've been doing a, a series of personal discipleship conversations about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And uh, one of the things that we want to talk to you about this morning is this whole idea of you being committed to growing. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 19 is an unusual passage when we talk about growing, but I think it's got some really, really good points. Can I say this? As a believer in Jesus, one of the promises of God is that you and I can grow. That we don't stay the same. We don't deal with the same issues. We don't have the same responses. We don't have the same capacity. We don't have the same resilience. There's something in us that actually forces us to grow and to develop. I think in 2 Peter, Peter talks about all the good things that we can believe in God. And he says, if you have these things in increasing measure, it will stop you from being unproductive and ineffective. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be unproductive and ineffective. I want to know that in the things of God, in the gifts of the Spirit, in the fruits of the Spirit, that there is a development and growth in me that the person that I am today is not the person I was 10 or 20 years ago. You know, you think about the disciples as they were with Jesus. And I love the way the Bible labels the disciples. At the beginning, the Bible talks about them as being fishermen. Then when they are with Jesus, the Bible says that they are disciples. And at the end of their lives and throughout the, the letters of Paul, you see him referring to them as apostles. From fishermen to disciples to apostles. There was a development and growth in these ordinary men's lives when they are with Jesus. And can I say this, the more that you are with Jesus, the more you walk with Him, the more you talk like Him, the more you spend time with Him, you can understand and have a great belief that the person that you are is constantly changing, not because there's any good in you, but because who Jesus Christ is in your life. And so this whole idea of personal growth and development and shaping in our lives. One, one of the areas of growth that you and I don't often look at is this whole, I, er, this whole area of stewardship. Really to grow in what we have, not grow in what we want. You know, we live in a generation, it's always about what we want. It is, isn't it interesting that we always want the things that we don't currently have? And yet the Bible teaches us about contentment, about growing and stewarding what the Lord has given us today to grow into what God has for us. You may have a vision and a dream and a purpose. Many people don't walk into it because they don't understand the power of actually growing into that promise that God has for them. The ability to nurture what we have today to actually pause and to celebrate what God is doing in our life today. I'll say this, on a winter's morning, 
This message is good for the soul. It is good for the soul. You know, I was uh, flicking through the, the news the other day and this article came up about an old explorer, you know, lived on a couple hundred years ago and he was exploring in Western Australia and he was walking through the desert and obviously Western Australia, many parts are very dry and he was trying to find different fresh water and so he'd go from one lake to the next, they would say. So he'd find a lake of fresh water and he'd celebrate that and then he'd go to the next lake and he'd find fresh water there and he was doing this for years. He was always looking to the next thing, always going after the next thing and he thought, after many days of walking, he thought that there would be this particular lake somewhere else in Western Australia where there would be a larger pool of fresh water. And so he had his expectation, he had his dream, he had his purpose. And so he began to walk towards this particular lake. And after many days, he finally arrived there. And when he got there, he realised it wasn't a freshwater lake, but it was a saltwater lake. And so he named it the Lake of Disappointments. The Lake of Disappointment. Now, they've just changed the name. That's why it popped up on the news feed for them to, it's now called, it's, it's a more traditional heritage name. But the Lake of Disappointment, it was named like that for probably 100, 200 years. And I began to think about that church that many times in our lives, we often have lots of disappointment. We try to believe for a destination. We go after a certain thing and when we get there, it's not what we thought it was. We thought the job would be the one that would solve all of our problems. And when we finally arrive at that destination, we, we realise it's not cracked up as what it was meant to be. We have this mentality like this explorer. If I just keep going for the next thing, then maybe I'll find that sense of fulfilment and satisfaction in my life. And when we arrive there, we go, it's like the lake of disappointment. This conversation today is not arriving at a goal. This conversation today is about celebrating what God is doing in your life right now. We are so driven by the next thing. We are so stirred by the next thing. We are so obsessed by the next thing. It's one of the things that people, that that Facebook keeps people engaged, keep flicking to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. We have a generation that's consumed by the next thing that we fail to realise what God is doing in our life today. And let me say this, none of our lives are perfect, but can I say this, God is always doing something in our lives. So today is about taking a pause, having a conversation and going, you know what? My life may not be perfect. I may be still trying to arrive at this particular position in life, but right now I thank the Lord that He's in my life today and that God is doing something profound, something powerful, something significant, something life-changing in my life today. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 19 is a phenomenal passage because Moses is giving the people of Israel instruction on what to do when they get to the promised land. Now, you know, when you read about instruction, the Word of God, it's often how to get to the promised land. But here Moses is speaking to God's people about what to do when they get there. I would say this to you this morning, is that you and I walk through many promised lands in our lives. I think the ultimate promised land is when we die and go to be with Jesus forever and ever. Hallelujah, right? But the reality is you and I walk through many promised lands. When I was a young man, I used to pray, God, give me the right woman. Then Franka came along. I walked in the promised land. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Remember the first time I got my first job and uh, getting my first company car in that job was just I walked in that promised land. You and I walked through many promised lands. Yeah, it's funny, growing up in the household that I was in, my, my house wasn't perfect. There's no doubt like many of our houses here today. But I remember getting up early and would often see my dad praying at 3 a.m. in the morning. God deposited something in me. There was a promised land moment of revelation that God was doing something in my life as a young boy back then. You and I walked through many promised lands in our lives. I mean, the problem with us is that we don't see them or recognise them because we are always looking for perfection. You know, the promised land that God's people walked into was not a perfect land. I mean, God comes to them and says, hey, listen, you need to grow into this promised land. There's going to be wild beasts of the field that you are going to have to contend with. There are other nations that you are going to fight against in order to take hold of this promised land. It wasn't a perfect promised land, but it was God's promised land for them. 
And I think many times you and I, in all the different seasons that we walk into, we can forget of what God is doing today. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 19 says this. Moses is giving the Israelites instruction. He says, when you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an axe to them because you can eat their fruit. Do not cut them down. Are the trees people that you should besiege them? So my title this morning is Don't Kill the Fruit Trees. Don't kill the fruit trees. Be smart in what God has given you today. Don't disregard and don't write off the fruit trees that are in your life today. And the reality is this, I mean, you know, Moses is talking in a culture when nations would invade other nations, they would go and raise everything to the ground. And God is saying to Israel, he goes, hey, listen, don't be like the great, like the other nations. Understand that you can have wisdom in the land that I give you. I'm amazed that people find it so easy to pull things down, but it's a lot harder to build them up. We live in a generation now, people want to pull down institutions and pull down history and pull down a whole, but it's so easy to pull stuff down. It's another thing to rebuild it back up again. So God is saying to Israel, be wise when you walk into your promised lands to be discerning about the things that are fruitful. And at the end of the day, church, God wants us to be fruitful. Amen. So I want to talk to you today about the, the, the fruitful trees that are in your promised land land today. I think the first one is this, is that Moses says to Israel, he says, look for the fruit trees, that when you go into the promised land, be aware of the fruit trees that are in that land. You know, the land that you're in right now, church, you can look at all the things that are not going well, or you can make a decision that no matter what my life is like right now, there are fruit trees of blessing that I can lean on right now. And this is really what God is saying to Israel. He's saying, hey, it's not a perfect promised land. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be fights. There's going to be a few wars. But look for the fruit trees. Make a decision about where you put your focus. Make a decision about what you put your attention to. Focus on the fruit trees. You know, it's funny that last week I was at a church and then I was doing a, a regional meeting of pastors and I, had, I think I preached about six or seven times. And anyway, one of the meetings in, in this particular church meeting, uh, I did an altar call. People came forward. As you know, I love moving in the prophetic. And, uh, you know, this girl came forward and you know, I began to give her a word. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, you know, that, that just the word faith over her life. And so I started to, you know, prophesy faith and you're going to be a woman of faith and God's going to give you a multiplication of faith and there's going to be challenges that you step into that are going to force faith to come to the surface. And all I really saw was the word faith, but faith was all over. And I think I would have mentioned the word about 10 times, faith this and faith that and faith this and faith that. Come on, who thinks that's a good word? Faith. It's a safe word. Anyway, the church start laughing. So what are you guys laughing at? I'll just stop the meeting. What are you guys laughing at? She turned to me. She goes, my name is Faith. <laughs> and I began to think about that. How God just was reaffirming in this girl's life what he is doing today. And to be reminding her that before she was even born, God knew her in her mother's womb. And I don't know what challenges she was going through. I don't know what difficulties she was facing. But the reality is, is, is God was reminding her, not what she wanted to be, but who God had made her today. What God was doing in her life today. What she possessed today. Look to the fruit trees. Look to the areas of your life that are fruitful. Look to the things that God is blessing. Put the, the anointing of God in those things and allow those things to thrive and grow. It is interesting that God says to Israel, after many days, after many days, I think good things, fruitful things take many days to achieve. Don't be discouraged in the many days or be dismayed why there are many days. 
I think about how God is developing this church and the health that is in this church right now. Let me just say this, the health that is in this place has taken many days. Before my generation, the Pastor Allen generation, the strength of missions in this church, the strength of our ministries in this church, the giving in this church has taken many, many days. And we have to be reminded again that it's not just about endlessly doing life, but there is fruitfulness in the many days. Number one, look to the fruit trees. Number two, keep the fruit trees. Don't cut the fruit trees down. And here it was the culture of generations. They'd cut everything to the ground. They'd raise it to the ground. But God is saying to his people, hey, don't be like every other generation. Be different. You know what I wrote down here? Keep the fruit trees. Don't self-sabotage the things that are blessing and favour in your life today. Come on, that deserves a big amen. I say this pastorally because when I counsel people often, I've realised that many times we don't need the devil, we are our own worst enemy. We just have the ability to muck up the fruitful area. We don't want to admit it. Maybe you're thinking I'm a bit too harsh because I haven't been here for a while. Well, it's broccoli this morning. It's medicine for the soul. It's a bit of Brussels sprout, amen? I hate Brussels sprouts. I remember what I was thinking about. What was I saying? We just sabotage the fruitfulness in our lives. We become familiar with it. The job that we once had that we prayed for, God gives us that job and now we can't stand the boss. Yet at one stage, that job was a blessing. When we got married, we looked at our partner in the eye, the woman of our dreams, and years later, we get so frustrated with one another, and yet that was a blessing back then. What changed? What changed? Your kids are born, you celebrate. As they get older, they begin to test the boundaries, and there's challenges, and you're, oh, these little mongrels, what did I do? And yet they were a blessing back then. They still are a blessing today. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have the ability to minimize, to self-sabotage the things that God is doing in our lives today. God has given us many things to appreciate the blessing of God today. You know, when I first came into the ministry, all I ever wanted to do was be in the ministry. All I ever wanted to do. And uh, for me, it took me a lot longer than most people. So I had to go through different things and God was shaping me in different areas and I was very shy, I couldn't communicate properly and had to work in sales and learn how to suffer rejection from people. I used to be a door-to-door salesman and, uh, you know, one in out of 50 doors, they would actually have a conversation, but 49 out of the 50 doors, they'd slam the door, you're an idiot, you are get lost, what are you doing on my front lawn? I'm going to call the cops, I'm going to call the dogs. I tell you what, that was the best thing for my life because I learned how to deal with rejection, Amen. And I remember then when I stepped into the ministry in my mid-20s, Alessandra was just born. I remember rocking up to church and my boss said to me when I left the, the, the business, he said, hey, you can take one thing with you. So I took my chair. I love my high back chair. And these days you can buy high back chairs really cheap, but back then they were really expensive. And I know that the church didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have great chairs. So I thought, I'm going to feel like a king with my high back chair. And I remember lining up, getting up to church at 7 a.m. in the morning, ready to start work. And I met the cleaner. The cleaner goes, what are you doing here? I said, I'm ready to start work. He goes, mate, pastors don't start at 7 a.m. in the morning. So I had to come back a few hours later. I remember dragging up, pulling up the chair in the top office, getting my computer from home, thinking, oh, man, this is the best thing in the world. I'm in the ministry. I didn't care what I had to bring. I didn't care about the pay. I didn't care about anything like that at all. I was so appreciative of what God has done in my life. You know, years later, God always reminds me of that moment in time, never to underappreciate what He's doing in my life today. Do you remember the moment that you gave your life to Christ? Do you remember the moment where that was a blessing, but now you've just shifted in your mentality because maybe you've just become tired? Can I encourage you today? Don't self-sabotage. Right. The third one is this, look after the fruit trees. Just don't see them, but nurture them, look after them. One of those days, 
where we don't self-sabotage, but just don't despise the days of small beginnings. You know, there are some seasons, church, you've only got one fruit tree. Everything else is going bananas and there's stuff happening all around you. And the only thing that you have got going for you is one fruit tree. But can I say to you this morning, what can God do with that one fruit tree? What can the Holy Spirit do with the one area of your life that you surrender Him that has been fruitful and effective? When I was 16 years old, we had a preacher come to church who gave me a word. I'll never forget this word. It wasn't a word about my future. It wasn't a word that, you know, you're going to preach in front of hundreds of people and you're going to be doing this and you're going to be doing that. You're going to be leading a great church. It was a simple word. The altar call came and I went forward, put his hands upon me. He goes, I've got a word from God for you. I said, what's that? He says, God says that you've got a good mind. <laughs> now, being a 16-year-old kid, some of you don't know where your strengths are. Some of you are so insecure about who you are. But when he said, I've got a good mind, I went, I'm not an idiot. I've got a good mind. Just had that one thing. Not about my future, but about what I had today. I've got a good mind. God shaped my mind. God developed my mind. I started applying myself to the Word of God. It wasn't a word about my future. It was a word about what God had given. I just had one fruit tree. That was it. No one else saw potential. I didn't even know what my future looked like. But I had one fruit tree. I had a good mind. He's like, I had another, I've, I've had some unusual words in my life. And another pastor. We're in a staff meeting. This guy was so accurate in the prophetic. And I'll never forget, as we go around the staff room, he looks at me. And rather than naming me, he said, hey, hey, you with the face. <laughs> what, no one else has got a face? <laughs> Obviously, I have a very expressionist face. You with the face. I go, thank the Lord, I've got a face. It's interesting now, you know, I'm a face of some things, like the ACC in Victoria. God was speaking prophetically all the way back then. What, what I had now, what I had today, what God had given me, the one fruit tree in my lifetime. It is so easy for us to think about all the things we don't have. What about celebrating the one fruit tree that God has given you in your life today? You understand what I'm saying this morning? This is what God is saying to Israel. I love this, Psalm 126, verse one to three. They're celebrating what God has done. It says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were all like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them and the Lord has done great things for us. What you and I do is we often look at the Lord has done for them, but we forget to celebrate what God has done for us. It's time for us to stop looking over the shoulder. It's time for us always believing that maybe one day our life will be better. Maybe it will be, but we can live with a sense of contentment that God has done great things for us in our lives today. 2023, at the end of June, at the end of the financial year, We've come out of COVID. We're alive and breathing. We ain't in heaven yet, but we're celebrating what God is doing. Amen. All right, I'm done. No, I'm not. I'll keep going. Be thankful for what you have today. Be grateful for what you have today. Don't become familiar with what you have today. You know, there's so many areas that we become familiar. We become familiar with people's kindness. We become familiar with people's loyalty. We become familiar how people treat us. We become familiar. Number two, it took a while to shape the things that are in your life today. Now some of those scholars would say some of those fruit trees were actually olive trees. He cut them down. It's going to take a long time for that thing to grow back again. The person that you are today, the breakthroughs that God has given you today, your life may not be perfect, but the lessons you have learnt today have taken like a fruit tree a long time to develop. Don't discount it. Don't write it off. Celebrate what God is doing in your life today. The last one is this. It's really simple. 
That is to enjoy the fruit trees. Enjoy what God has given you today. The land that you own today, like the Israelites, may not be perfect, but enjoy it. It's what God has landed in your lap. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. I spoke this over to the pastors of the state at the beginning of the year, and I love this passage. It says, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 19, it says, Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possession and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. You know, there's a lot of wealthy people that are not saved, that are not happy in their toil. We may have a lot, we may have little, but what we have overrides anything else that the world can ever give us. God can give us happiness in our toil. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. How good is that passage? God occupies us with gladness of heart. That when you're under pressure, there's a gladness of heart that comes over you. When you're dealing with difficulty, there's a gladness of heart. When you're dealing with challenges in the promised land that you are in today, there is a gladness of heart. Church, this is a gift from God. We can ask God to give us this gift. God, I pray, give me a gladness of heart as I move forward. You know, I made a decision this year. I'm gonna enjoy the things that last year I didn't enjoy. I'm just gonna make a decision. I'm gonna have gladness of heart this year. Sometimes I walk through the shopping center fountain and go smiling away. People think I'm a weirdo. I don't care. Gladness of heart. We can believe for a gladness of heart. Enjoy the fruitfulness that God has given you today. We are so, I'm destination driven. I know where I want to take this church. Dreams about what God can do in the future. But I don't want to discount the fruitfulness of what God is doing in this church right now. I've got a dream for my kids and marriage and where God is taking us as a family. But I want to celebrate the fruit trees that are in my life today. And no matter what we've gone through, no matter how much difficulty we may face in the past, no matter whether we have been stripped bare over the last three or four years, there are fruit trees in your life. It's time for you to celebrate what God is doing and allow the Holy Spirit to multiply those things. And maybe it might be like I was 16 years old, I've got a good mind. There are people here today, your mind is different to your family. God broke a curse over your mind when you gave your life to Jesus. That is the blessing of God over your life today. Your behaviour is different. Your attitudes are different. You respond to pressure differently. Don't allow the enemy to say you're the same as everyone else. Now, God did something significantly different in your life when you gave your life to Jesus. He shifted your mind. He shifted your emotions. Something happened on the inside of you. Praise God. That is a fruit tree in your life that you can celebrate when it comes to the things of God. I want the musicians to come. I'm going to pray for people today. We're going to have communion. Is Waverly doing their own communion? Are they doing communion with us? I'm doing it. Fantastic. We're going to take communion together in our Waverly campus, in our um, Danny Non campus. I want you to get ready for that. If you need a communion cup, lift up your hand. One of our ushers will quickly get, get that to you. That'd be great. I want us to stand to our feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man, they're noisy little things, aren't they? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our promised land isn't perfect. We walk through many promised lands in our life. But God is with us. And in every land there are fruit trees. And when we focus on the fruit trees and not on the problems and not on the difficulties, 
But when we look at the way that God has brought fruitfulness into our life and what God has done for us, it gives us a fresh perspective. It gives us a healthy understanding of the goodness of God. I felt the Lord speak to me as I was preparing this message. I think next year's Vision Sunday is gonna be a year of celebration for our church, a year of gratefulness, a year of thankfulness. We often talk about what God will do, but we never thank Him for what He has done. Never look back and say, Jesus, thank You for what You've done in my life. Thank You for what You've done in my family. Thank You for what You've done in me. Lord Jesus, and I want you to ponder on a couple of those things. We're gonna sing this song again, what we sang before, just the, from the top, and then we're gonna take communion. I want you to prepare your heart this morning. In your own heart, just have a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. Say, God, today I just focus on the fruitfulness in my life today. Thank you, God, that my mind is healthy. Thank you, God, that I'm alive and breathing. There are people I know in our church today that are at the point of death. And here they are today celebrating the goodness and the faithfulness of God. God always comes through. God never lets us down. I want you to ponder those things as we begin to sing this again. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we fall down we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy 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 come on sing it we cry we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 easily you know when you think about it other nations would kill the fruit trees and yet God asks his people to offer the fruit of the trees as an offering to him. It is so countercultural to the world. He would say, Let the fruit grow so that you can come and present it to me as a gift. What I really feel this morning before we take communion is I feel there are people here and God is saying, I want you to come and offer the fruit of your life to him. Just surrender it at his feet today. So the fruitfulness of your life in God's hands is so much more multiplying than what you can do in your own strength. And maybe today you say, like the widow's mind, I've just got one fruit tree. I've got one thing, but I'll offer it at your feet, Jesus. I pray you multiply it. You'd increase it. Because in your hands, it is much better than in my hands. Maybe you've got a great relationship with your kids. That's the fruit of your life. But say, God, I surrender that to you. God, make me even more fruitful in my relationship with Him. Maybe today you have a business and that's the fruit of your life. Say, Jesus, today I offer it to you. Surrender it at your feet today. I'm going to open up the altar today as we sing this song again. And you know, Chatty Campus, Waverley Campus, you're watching as well. You say, today I want to offer the fruit of my life to the Lord. I want to give it to Him today. It may be one thing. You may have a whole orchard. You may just have one fruit. But say, God, today I'll offer it to you. Because really the fruit trees were there as an offering to God. They were there to nourish the people and help them. And at the end of the day, the Bible speaks about come and offering first fruits to the Lord. And today, if you say, Holy Spirit, today I want to offer you the fruit of my life this morning. Before we take communion, why don't you just come and just stand here. And say, God, today I'll give you my fruit tree. I give it to you today in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry. We cry, holy, holy, holy. 
Thank you, Jesus. Is the Lamb. We cry. We cry. Holy, holy, holy. We cry. Holy, holy, holy. We cry. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lamb. Believe there's someone here this morning and there's something that's very dear and precious to you. God is saying, I, I want you to surrender that to Him. Nothing may happen as a result of that, but in your heart of hearts, you've even submitted that thing to the King of Kings. Maybe you've taken a while to produce this fruit tree and it's bearing fruit. You go, I don't know about that. But God is saying to you today, come and surrender to Him. It'll grow bigger, more effective than what you could possibly do in your own abilities today. As we sing this again, if that's you, why don't you come and then we're going to take communion today. It's a communion of surrender and it's a communion of thankfulness. Come on. We cry. We cry. Holy, holy, holy. We cry. We cry. today if you're at the front or in the tears you're ready we want to thank the Lord today for what he's done it's a communion of thanksgiving it's a communion of saying God we give you our best as you hold the wafer in your hand it represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us he was broken for you and me he didn't need to be broken he chose to be broken according to his father's will he was broken so that you and I will be whole he was broken so that you and I can be restored again Today, Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your restoration. We thank You, God, that in Your broken body, God, I was restored. Lord Jesus, I thank You today. I'm so grateful today. I honour You today in Your wonderful Name. Let's eat today. Thank You, Jesus. We hold the cup in our hand that represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. He bore our sin, not His own. He was sinless, but He bore every failure, every brokenness, every bad decision. He bore that on the tree once and for all so that you and I can be cleansed. What a joy it is to have our sins forgiven. What a joy it is to come to Him and to ask for forgiveness and He washes away our past. What a joy not to live with the burden because He bore that for us on the cross. Lord Jesus, today we thank You for Your blood that was shed today. We honour You. We bless You. We thank You today, Lord Jesus. Let's drink. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just begin to thank Him. Thank You, Jesus. God, we worship you. We cry holy. our chats and congregation. We love you guys. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you tonight. Father God, I praise people are here at the front. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, as we offer, God, the fruit of our life to you. It may be large, it may be small, it doesn't matter. We give it to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that fruitfulness has come out of our lives. We thank You, Lord Jesus, for Your favour that's come out of our lives. We hold, thank You, Holy Spirit, for Your anointing. Lord Jesus, we offer that to You today. God is hearing Your prayers today, church.
He's responding in kind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We honour you. We thank you today. Just wherever your head is bowed and every eye closed. If you're in this place today, you don't know Jesus. If you're in this place today, your life is not right with God. If you can't say that Jesus is leading and guiding you, I'm not asking him whether you're religious. There are many people that are religious, but actually really don't know the Lord. Today, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a personal relationship with Him, if you can't say that He is leading and guiding your life, that He is, and we would say, the Lord of your life, then I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And today, if you want that in your own heart, if you say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be a Lord of my life. And I'm gonna pray a prayer. It's a prayer of repentance, a prayer of saying, God, I'm gonna turn around and start following you. I'm gonna give up my independence. I'm gonna surrender my life to you today. Where every head is bowed, and every eye closed, if you're in this place today, say, Matt, will you pray for me today? I want to give my life to Jesus. I want Him to be the Lord of my life. But on the count of three, I want you to lift up your hand. Once I see it, you can put it down. Ushers, you may need to help me because it's a little bit dark in the auditorium. But today, if you want to give your life to Christ, I'm going to pray for you this morning. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. On the count of three, one, two, three. Awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Good on you, buddy. Over there, someone else here today. Once I see your hand, you can put it down. Awesome, fantastic. God bless you, wonderful. Should have got my glasses, a bit hard to see. Thank you. Over there, thank you. Thanks, Praveen. <laughs> Over there, wonderful. God bless you. Fantastic, awesome. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Four or five people lifted up their hands, so good. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. I want you to pray this prayer after me and everyone, I want us to pray together. Say, so, dear Lord Jesus, I ask You today to come into my life, to forgive me of my sin, give me a brand new future, be my Lord and my Saviour today. I give everything to You. I will follow You for the rest of my days. In Your Name, Amen, Amen. Church, let's give these wonderful people a great hand this morning. I want to encourage you to do three things. Number one, tell someone. Number two, we want to give you a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, things that I've preached about out of the Word of God today is out of the Word of God. If you go to our Next Step counters, grab a Bible. The third one, get plugged into church. This is a good church. This is, this is a great church. Get plugged into church. That will be absolutely fantastic. Hey, church, celebrate what God is doing in our life today. Amen. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. Don't forget tonight, it's going to be amazing. Jesse Winchester. God bless you. Enjoy the cold because we're tough in Melbourne. We'll see you tonight, next week. Amen. What an incredible service. Uh, Pastor Matt, what a powerful word. And I just pray that you got something out of that today, that you can take that into your week. It's not just going to be something that goes in one ear and out the other, but it's something that you take practically and hold on to. I also want to encourage you, maybe you prayed that prayer to uh, accept Jesus into your heart today. We want to connect with you. We want to walk that through with you because this walk isn't something we do alone. It's something we do together. It's something we do in community. And even if we're separated by distance, that we can still walk this journey together. We can help you get plugged into a local church near you. If that will work for you, uh, get a Bible into your hands. We'd love to do that. So you can get in touch with us. Uh, And that would be absolutely awesome. Well, let me pray for you before you go today. Uh, Jesus, I thank you that we can gather together, even though we may be separated by distance, we can gather together and lift up your name. Father, I just pray for anyone with a need this morning who might be unwell, who might be stuck at home. Father, I just speak your healing power into their life right now. Let there be peace in their home and healing in their body. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Man, let me encourage you, if you are anywhere uh, in proximity to our Danny Non campus, make sure you register for conference. We would love to have you here. It's going to be a fantastic weekend together. But have a fantastic week, and we cannot wait to see you again next week for Faith Online.